and we could see that this animal had cleared out an entire area. Among Africa's indigenous animal population, only giraffes could reach foliage at this height. But there are no giraffes in this part of Africa. Could this be some other animal? According to the uh, locals and to my guide, there is no other animal that is quite like this animal. The Monster Quest Science team has obtained these tracks and will subject them to testing for the first time ever. Sauropod tracks are good two or three feet across the big ones, and even small ones are at least a foot and a half across. Dr. Donald Prothero determines the cast that Peter Beach made in Africa was only one foot across. I look at the photographs here, for example, and it shows what appear to be three parallel scratches in the ground. It could have been claw marks or something, uh, but they don't look anything like a sauropod claw mark. Prothero will need to compare known dinosaur tracks with the casts from Africa to finish his analysis. Sunrise. The Monster Quest expedition team is in Cameroon, West Africa. And the word spreads that outsiders have arrived to look for the monster. They have the most contact or they observe the animal more often than anyone else. The villagers, known as the Baka, are eager to talk to the Westerners about the creature. They draw an image in the dirt of what they've seen. Look at that, Bill. Just to draw with such incredible accuracy, the bulky body, the th between three and five claws, you have the head with the facial features of a python. The locals have virtually no contact with the outside world. And what's so amazing about this is these people have nothing whatsoever to gain from telling stories because we don't pay them. They get no reward from us for doing this. To help clarify their descriptions, Bill Gibbons has brought along a set of pictures. These will help determine if they are able to tell the difference between an elephant and a dinosaur. They live in the forest, so uh, uh, they, 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 can, they can easily see, find the difference between Mokerembe and another type of animal. While Gibbons flips the pages, their guide translates. They don't know a bear or deer. But when Gibbons flips the pages to the drawing of a dinosaur, eyes open and fingers point. This is Mokembe, which they are. So this is how Mokembe look. This technique is known to some in the scientific community as comparative observations. Oh, like this. Every time you talk about Mokembe to Bakas or to people who live around the river, they they only describe it as animal with a long neck and a head like a snake. This convinces Gibbons that the sightings are not a case of misidentification. But we've come to the conclusion that this is definitely a different, unique animal in its own right. This woman says she saw the animal while fishing with her husband. The head was like a kind of snake, but it was very long, very long. Dongjal Ture spotted a large animal coming out of the Ja River while out in a boat. I saw this animal trying to eat some leaves. The only part of the animal we saw was the head and the neck. She says her encounter lasted less than a minute, yet left her terrified. The water was churning. The boat was shaking like an earthquake. Everything was shaking in the river. I felt very afraid. Her sighting was of something she could not explain. I've never seen another one since I've lived in the village. The prints being examined by the science team were found by the Ja River in 2004. The river is 450 miles in length and forms the Republic of Congo, Cameroon border. It is fed by both the Bumba and the Ngoko rivers. 
it's a perfect highway for them. The Congo has long been known as a volatile hotspot for crime and armed militias. With increased dangers, the team must be extra cautious. From guerrilla warfare to the local animals, uh, to just the hazards of being on an unknown river, uh, there's always danger involved. The jungle completely surrounds the river, encroaching on every side. Poisonous snakes and deadly crocodiles add to the risk. The team is traveling in canoes used by the villagers, made from hollowed out trees. This increases the chance of a potential encounter. The team heads to the spot where the tracks were originally found. Because this is a place where we find a lot of track of uh, Mokemebe on this part. I'm specialist of uh, a lot, a lot of, uh, um, of many track of animals. I never seen this type of a track that day, and it was the first time to see that type of track. The team conducts a thorough search for any new tracks. Let's have a look around, see if we can find somewhere that uh, looks promising. Water, water, wash everything here. It's pretty dry and cracked here, just ant holes. Uh, not much yet. Uh, the water's kind of swept everything out of here pretty effectively. The team sets up a motion sensing camera trap, which will snap photos should the animal return here to feed. Okay, Rob, it's all yours. What do you think, maybe on this upright tree here? All set. We are ready to go. The boat heads upriver, scouting for other locations. This is a good spot. It's right on the edge of the river, so that we can catch all the action at the right height. Bungees. They place another motion sensing camera. If they do come up to to feed in that area, uh, presumably they would set off the camera trackers. The team is operating on the theory that the creature hides within natural cave formations. During the dry season, they hold themselves up. It's a kind of reptilian uh, hibernation, you know, where they just cease activity for a while. Frequently, the animals uh, will find a place that's already hollowed out, you know, in a bend of the river, and just uh, dig in deeper and then wall themselves up. They believe that the animal will stay in the caves until the water level rises. The average size of the caves that we've found so far have been 15 feet by 15 feet. See it there under the, under the bank? You look for a bend in the river primarily and then you look for uh, piles of, of massed earth. And as we found out, that's mostly on the Congo side. The piles of dirt at the side of the bank may be a sign of the monster digging a cave dwelling and that they could be getting closer to an encounter. They spot something interesting. Wait, because this looks like there's been some activity here. What I'm looking at is these large vent holes. Uh, there's about one, two, three. There's two of them that seem to go quite far back. Gibbons believes the animal not only digs itself a cave, but also makes air vents for it to breathe while inside. He pulls up near shore. We've seen similar events before, which um, we believe are associated with the caves that the animals tend to uh, hibernate in for the duration of the dry season. Wow, that goes way back. That's very, very deep. How thick do you think this cave wall might be, though? Their guide grabs a six-foot-long stick and stretches his arm into the hole. He cannot reach the end of the cave. I think this could be one of the hibernating caves. Monster Quest is deep in the jungles of Cameroon, searching for signs of the last living dinosaur. Natives call it Mokele Mbembe. I saw the Mokele Mbembe when I was very young. Edimo Ferdinand was helping his father with fishing nets when he had a frightening first-hand encounter. I was something like 150 meters away. He watched in both fear and amazement. The animal is like an elephant. 
but the neck is very long. It's a very big animal. When it comes out of the water, it makes a lot of movement on the river. Not only the animal size, but the sound that it made terrified the boy. For a few minutes, the animal fed on leaves, then went back into the water. When this animal comes out of the water, you see something like a big splash. The expedition team led by Bill Gibbons and Rob Mullen believe they may have found the beast's hiding place. We cannot think of a single other animal, reptile, mammal, that would make burrows like these. It's still going in. These air vents go quite far down uh, into uh, the side of, of, of this high muddy bank. Quite deep, it seems to be going quite far into the bank, um, especially the one behind me. Clearly, they've been dug out for a purpose. But the walls to the cave are like cement. Without powerful tools, there's no way to find out. Once they're sealed in there, it's very difficult to get them out. It's just a pity we didn't have any other way of finding out what's on the other side of this mud wall. Off we go. The team will continue up the Deja River. They spot an unusual fish floating in the water. I, I've never seen a fish like that, with a trunk like an elephant. The team has found a rare elephant fish, unique to this region of Africa. This fish really shows the wide diversity of, of animal life around here. The elephant fish species use their long snouts to sift through river bottom sediment for food. Now the team prepares for an underwater survey of the river. As we have the fish camera, which is a very lightweight and portable but essential to our work, the camera is disguised as a fish which you can drop down to about 50 feet. This is a, a lightweight fish finder sonar unit uh, which gives us the depth of uh, any particular location that we choose to investigate. Uh, we're hoping to locate any large uh, submerged animal. If the sonar spots anything, Gibbons hopes to film it with the camera. Ready? I'm still checking. Uh, drop it a little more into the water. It doesn't take long before they get a hit. Is that a crocodile? That looks like a croc, yeah. It's very big, whatever it is. I'm trying to get down as, as low as I can here. I'm hitting the bottom slightly. OK, we have another large target at the bottom here. That, look, that looks like a croc. That's a croc. Crocodile? Yes. It was long and serpentine, whatever that it was. That was a very, very big target. It's huge. May not even been a crocodile. No, you know, that, there's so many first... strange animals in this river. Yeah. So many strange animals. What depth do we have? We have 6.0 here. Uh, okay, right. Average I've let out too much cable. See this tub, this, this, this. See this. What is this? Hmm? Yes. Do you think that might have been a snake? Maybe, but this is very long and big. What have you got? I don't think I want to meet up with that snake. It makes you wonder what's right under right under you. I mean, it's not that deep, but we're seeing all sorts of odd odd profiles on the fish finder. This tuna is, uh, is perfect because you can see very far. Here, look at this. Look, look, we have something. We have something. Oh, wow. Fish. Whoa. What that is... is a very big target. Look at the size of that thing. They're having a hard time getting a clear picture in the murky water. And at six feet, look at it. The storm they encountered on their journey here has stirred up the river bottom. It's uh, very discolored. It's, it's like trying to find something in a, in, a, in a swimming pool full of chocolate and milk. Okay, here we go, here we go. Here it is again. Yep, there's another big one, big hump. This, this cannot be a branch. No? Very long. I, may, I don't know which type of uh, things can be, but, but it seems like a, a very, very long animal. 